In this episode of Meet the Psychiatrist, Dr. Sparshu is talking with an elementary principal and how schools can better understand the various types of treatments that a student may be receiving, as well as ways that school staff can support them. So thank you for joining me, Dr. Sparshu, this morning talking about mental health treatments. So let's get started. What does mental health treatment look like? Well, mental health treatment begins with clarifying the scope and severity of the challenges and identifying whether a mental disorder may be playing a role. This will help us to start making a treatment plan and thinking about goals for recovery. Initially, we may focus on getting certain symptoms under control, things like low mood, anxiety, or inattention, mm -hmm. but it's also important that we start laying the foundations for strong mental health habits to try and make sure those symptoms don't come back again. But mental health treatment is about more than just symptom control. It's about a good quality of life and improving functioning for things like school and relationships. We also need to focus on strengths. So basically, what does the person have within them and around them that's going to help them get healthy and stay healthy? And that includes people in their lives, people who will support them in their recovery, like parents and teachers. And then, when we've thought about all of those things, it's time to start talking about our treatment options. All right, so it seems like there's lots of treatment options available. Where do we start? Well, when we consider our treatment options, it's important to think about how strong of evidence each one has. Based on this, we can divide our treatments into three big categories. Standard treatments, complementary treatments, and alternative treatments. Okay, so what's a standard treatment? Standard treatments are the ones that have been scientifically proven to be generally safe and effective. They'd include things like a medication prescribed by a medical doctor or certain types of talk okay. therapy. Okay, so that's a standard treatment. What's a complementary treatment? Well, complementary treatments are things that help our standard treatments work better, but generally on their own, they're not sufficient to treat the problem. They add a lot of value to our treatment plans and are especially important in sustaining wellness. So they'd include things like uh, eating a healthy, well-balanced diet or getting regular exercise. Okay, so I think you said something about an alternative treatment as well. So what is an alternative treatment? Uh, alternative treatments are things that people may wish to try instead of standard treatments, okay. even though they don't have strong scientific evidence behind them. That doesn't mean that they can't be helpful, just that they don't have solid evidence proving their safety and benefit. So you choose to help someone based on what type of evidence? Well, what I do is I make recommendations for what's most likely to help using the evidence and then applying that to the individual in front of me. Mm. But treatment's a collaborative process. It involves a doctor, a patient, and their support system. So ultimately what I'm here to do is clarify what's going on and then use my knowledge, training, and experience to discuss the treatment options. But in the end, everyone has to choose what feels right for them. All right, so how does this all play out? Where do we start? Well, let's do an example. Say we've got a 13-year-old girl and she's a big worrier. Mm. It's difficult for her to consistently go to school, and when she's there, she rarely talks to anyone, never raises her hand, and is terrified at the idea of public speaking. Mm. Most mornings, she wakes up with her stomach in knots, and it's difficult for her to get to sleep the night before school days. When she does get to school, she's usually calling or texting her family, asking to come home. But then, when she's at home, she's this amazing kid, smart, funny, caring, creative, and great with animals. Mm -hmm. So the parents bring her in, and I meet with her and meet with them, and after a careful consideration of all the information that we collect, I decide that she meets criteria for a mental disorder called social anxiety. Mm. The parents set a goal for initially just getting her to school more consistently, but a longer term goal of decreasing her overall level of anxiety and distress. So I might recommend a standard treatment of a course of cognitive behavioral therapy and a trial of a medication. And then to complement that, I suggest that she works on eating consistently, even a little something each morning, mm -hmm. meets with the school to discuss supports and accommodations and works on starting exercise at least three times a week for 30 minutes at a time. I also suggest it might be helpful for her to spend some time doing art or playing with her dog at night to help her relax and distract to get a better night's sleep. So what comes next after that? 
Well, once we've decided on a treatment plan together, then it's time to roll it out and uh, track how we're doing over time. Okay. Um, everyone is unique though, and we'll need a personalized treatment approach. Not everyone's gonna respond to the first things that we try, and patience is very important. It takes time for our mental health treatments to work, and you gotta remember that most mental disorders don't just show up overnight, and they're not gonna resolve that way either. Okay, so after we put all these treatments in place and we are following the plan, are they, are they cured? I get that question sometimes uh, from parents or, or students. Are, am I cured if I follow this plan? Well, like most medical conditions, there's not a complete cure for mental illness, but there are ways to treat the symptoms to the point that they're no longer causing significant distress or getting in the way of people doing what they want to do with their lives. But again, remember, mental health treatment isn't just about making symptoms go away. Mm -hmm. It's about building skills, and removing obstacles, and improving quality of life. And then, once somebody gets healthy, we want to do everything we can to keep them that way. Right. All right. So how can the school team or the school environment help? Well, school staff may be the first to notice when a child's mm -hmm. struggling with their mm -hmm. mental health because they've got a unique window into young people's functioning that just isn't available at home. They get to see students in a group setting and mm. over time may notice changes in their behavior, engagement, emotional expression, and their academic performance. Mm. If they start to notice challenges, they may bring this up with the parents or help the child get connected to resources within the school. Mm -hmm. They can also provide information that aids in mental health assessment. Mm. And then, if a young person has been diagnosed with a mental disorder, it often helps to involve the school as a part of our treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So teachers should try to become aware of these plans when they're put in place and also do whatever they can to discreetly help the student. Mm. Sometimes this might be as simple as meeting them at the front door and walking them to the classroom before the bell goes mm -hmm. or developing a subtle sign that the student can use to indicate that they need some more help or a break. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just being flexible about a due date on an assignment, giving a little bit of extra time on a test, or moving the student somewhere else in the classroom where they're less likely to be distracted. Right. A lot of the time, mental health practitioners will also ask teachers to fill out questionnaires or mm -hmm. track symptoms that helps to guide treatment. It's also very important to have regular communication between home and school, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to recognizing, celebrating, and building upon successes. Mm -hmm. Every student wants to succeed, including those who are struggling with their mental health, and teachers often play an essential role in giving them the best chance of making that happen. So we learned a lot today about the different treatment options, and I think it'll be really helpful for not only staff, uh, my teachers, um, parents, and children, right, in this, in this journey. So thank you very much. My pleasure. If you found this video to be helpful, remember to like and subscribe. For more information about mental health, remember to visit us at mentalhealthliteracy.org.